In today's video, we will be going over an incredible new PlayStation 4 RPG that has just been announced. It's over on Kickstarter. It is getting pledged a lot of money and it's getting very close to its goal. This is a game you absolutely need to know about. Not a lot of people are talking about it, but I want to bring you up to speed because it looks incredible. A fantasy RPG with mechs and airships could be a tremendous game, so we'll go over that. It's called Chained Echoes. Speaking of Kickstarter, a game that's been funded on Kickstarter and now has a release window of September 2019 is Summer and Mara, that looks like a great game and it's billed as The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker meets Stardew Valley. That's instantly going to make expectations pretty high, so I don't know if it's the best idea to market your game like that, but I want to take a look at that as well. Crossplay has been a big topic when we talk about PlayStation 4. For a while, Sony was pretty against it, but now we're really seeing the floodgates be opened. And the head of hi -Rez also wants to see Sony open more doors so they can allow their games to be crossplay as well. Of course, hi -Rez puts out a lot of multiplayer titles, most notably Realm Royale, but they've got a couple of other games so we'll talk about that. Dreams on the PlayStation 4 is quickly becoming one of my most anticipated games just because now I'm seeing what people are coming up with. There are so many interesting Dreams projects in the works. And this isn't just something simple like an RPG maker. There are some very in-depth games being created. And how about this? A newest one, a follow-up to PlayStation All-Stars. I want to take a look at that and what that could mean. I also want to talk about some legality issues that could come with Dreams. Not an area that I'm all too well versed in, but you have to explore that a little bit. And lastly, want to give you guys an update on Rainbow Six Siege Year 4 Season 1. That's a game that Ubisoft has really been keeping updated. And more content is coming to R6 Siege and a live stream will be held very soon as they go over that content as well. More on that at the end of this video. First, I really want to get you guys up to speed with Chained Echoes because this game looks so awesome. It's a 16-bit fantasy RPG with mechs and airships. A trailer for the game is out right now, and it's being funded at Kickstarter. There's 24 days to go. Right now, there's 929 backers. A little over $31,000 have been pledged of the $67,920 goal. I'm pretty sure it's going to hit that goal, and hopefully after we upload this video, some of you guys might go pledge as well. I personally made a pledge, and pledging about $19 will get you a copy of the game when it's released in September 2021. That's what they have listed as the estimated delivery time. The game has you take up your sword, channel your magic, or broad your mech. Chained Echoes is a 16-bit SNES-style RPG set in a fantasy world where dragons are as common as piloted mechanical suits. Follow a group of heroes as they explore a land filled to the brim with charming characters, fantastic landscapes, and vicious foes. Can you bring peace to a continent where war has been waged for generations and betrayal lurks around every corner? The key features of the game touts is 20 to 25 hours of playtime, fast-paced turn-based battle, no random encounters, enemies can be seen running around. So I love that. I absolutely hate random encounters. I think that's a very dated style of doing gameplay. Good to see this game is moving forward, even though it definitely has an old-school presentation. Tons of items to be looted, whether it be stolen or crafted, complex skill and equipment system, customize your own airship, travel and fight by foot or in your mech, 16-bit SNES-style graphics, and honestly, even though it's a 16-bit style, if you look at this game and you're not captivated by the visuals, I don't know what to say. It really does that old-school justice by modernizing it as well and making it palatable to new gamers, at least in my opinion. And then it does have music inspired by PlayStation 1 RPGs. Now, the normal funding is only going to let the game be brought to PC, Apple devices, as well as Linux. However, the stretch goal will bring it to the PlayStation 4, and I do believe they'll hit that stretch goal. They still have a long ways to go, and they already have nearly half of the pledged amount. And hopefully, as the word gets out about this game, more more pledges will come in. Now, it is slated for a September 2021 release based on the listing. So, a stretch goal on the PlayStation 4, you would imagine that it would be a PlayStation 5 game as well, but it would probably come to the PS4 as well. That's not a big deal. The game is going to be a long ways out, but man, I'm really liking what I'm seeing with Chained Echoes, and this is a game we're gonna make another video on where we really take a look at it in depth, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what to expect out of the game. We'll leave a link to the Kickstarter in the description box below. Moving on from that, a tropical adventure game in summer and Mara will be dropping in September. It's coming from Chipping Studios, and it's an intriguing adventure game that's billed as The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker meets Stardew Valley. Now, right away, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker is one of my favorite Zelda games, and Stardew Valley has been incredibly well received, so when you're billing a game as The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker meets Stardew Valley, okay, that's gonna make expectations very high. To some gamers, that might even raise some skepticism, like, whoa, you're promoting your game like that, but that also probably means they're very confident about what this game is. The features that Summer in Mara touts are more than 150 quests to make the world a better place, over 20 characters to meet and trade with, befriend them, more than 130 inventory items to craft, use, and trade, improve your boat, make it bigger and faster, 
Unlock and acquire new skills and abilities for Koa, helping her to craft, trade, and explore in an easy RPG system, and there will be a day and night cycle with climate events. The studio has also promised that Summer and Mara will always give players things to do, very similar to Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a game that, while it looks simple on the surface, there is so much depth to the game and it always remains engaging. I'm guessing that that's what they're going for with Summer and Mara. It's a game to keep your eyes on, and this one has already been fully funded through Kickstarter, and it will be released in September of 2019 for the PlayStation 4. Let's hope that release window stays. And this is a game I'll definitely keep you guys updated about. Moving on from that, crossplay has been a big topic in the gaming world recently, and we're finally seeing more and more games introduce crossplay, whether it be Fortnite, whether it be Rocket League. We know that Respawn wants to bring crossplay to Apex Legends, and that would be tremendous. However, High Res Studios also wants crossplay in all of their games. High Res had tweeted out this quote, Hey Sony and PlayStation, it's time to stop playing favorites and tear down the crossplay progression wall for everyone. We have Smite, Paladins, Realm Royale ready to go when you are. Those are three of the most popular free-to-play games in all of gaming. Yes, you might be looking at games like Fortnite and Apex Legends as the free-to-play kings right now, but right under that, Smite's very popular, Paladins has its own audience, and Realm Royale has been gaining a lot of traction. It's very popular on PC, and to see a larger community for those games, they really need it because the competition for free-to-play games is so high. You want to keep those communities as big as possible. You don't want to see cases where these communities just die off. If you open the floodgates and allow crossplay, that's going to keep the longevity of the game intact, and it's going to help everyone. It's gonna help the studio. It's gonna help the game. It's gonna help the gamers. There's no issue with this. The only issue is that Sony has been against it for a little while. But as we see the walls be turned down for games like Rocket League, Fortnite, hopefully Apex Legends, hopefully we can get it for every game. I want to see other games like fighting games that generally have their communities dissipate rather quickly, especially if they're a little bit older and especially if you're playing fighting games on PC. I want to be in a world where these games that are a little bit older still have active communities. And what's the best way to do that? Well, that's easy. It's actually to allow everyone to play with each other across all platforms. Now, I know that's not going to make every game persist, but it's definitely going to help out. And it looks like Hi Res is completely on board. Moving on from that, I've been talking a lot about Dreams, and this is a game that has been getting me really excited just because this is what I've been talking about. We needed to see what gamers were going to come up with. We needed to see what gamers were going to throw out and the ideas that they were going to have. And we saw somebody recreate the first section of Dead Space. We saw this cinematic FPS being created. There are so many other cool games in the works. And now this is going a little bit under the radar. Somebody is trying to create a sequel to PlayStation All-Stars. This was tweeted out by the PlayStation All-Stars Revival account, quote, exciting news attaches the official starting roster for the PlayStation All-Stars fan game being produced by Atomic Production on Dreams for PlayStation 4. The returning fighters in this roster include Nathan Drake, Kratos, Cole McGrath, Emmett Graves, Cat, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, Nariko from Heavenly Sword, Radic from Killzone, Sir Daniel, Sweet Tooth, Toro, Ratchet and Clank, Sackboy, Parappa the Rapper. And then newcomers include Spectre, Dartfield, Joel and Ellie, Solid Snake, Knack, Sora, Cloud Strife, Spider-Man, Crash Bandicoot, Spiral, Lara Croft, Tomba, Abe, Alloy, Kiryu, Kazuma, Chimera Hybrid, 2B, Captain Astro, and Batman. Now, this is really cool, but at the same time, I have to wonder how the legality issues come into play here. People did pretty crazy stuff with Little Big Planet as well, but if it gets to a point where people are creating these compelling games within Dreams, I think the floodgates for disasters can occur. Now, it's not like people are profiting off these games, but still, you would have to think that some issues could arise, especially because Dreams is going to be so accessible to everyone. It's a very interesting the game. The beta has shown off what this game can really do. It's been in development for quite a while, but I think Media Molecule is prepping up something really special with Dreams. I want to keep you guys posted about all the Dreams ongoings because I think this game could be pretty insane. I'll leave a link to the Twitter account in the description box down below, but a pretty cool development nonetheless. And lastly, Rainbow Six Siege is a game that Ubisoft has really kept updated, and now we are heading into Year 4 Season 1, and it's going to be getting two new operators. Here's the official statement from Ubisoft's Rainbow Six page. Year 4 Season 1 is all set to go featuring two new operators from the SASR. One's a stoic attacker who's just there to get the job done and the other is a quick-witted defender who's in there for guts and glory. Two old mates from way back, they've signed up with Rainbow to bring a little Aussie know-how to the other side of the world. Season 1's Operation Burn Horizon will also feature a new unnamed map, and there will be a Twitch stream held on February 17, 2019, where they show off all of the content for Year 4 Season 1. 
I've often talked about Rainbow Six Siege and how it's been one of those games that Ubisoft has stayed committed to. It was pretty good back in 2015, but over the years, it has just become more and more compelling of an experience. There have been its ups and downs, but overall, as far as a multiplayer game with longevity, Rainbow Six Siege has absolutely been that, and Year 4 Season 1 looks to bring even more content. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, you need to know about Chain Echoes. Yes, it's a game that's probably a little ways away, but it's a game I'm gonna keep you guys updated on. I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter page in the description box below. You don't have to pledge if you don't want, but if you like what you see, maybe throw down $19 and you will get a copy of the game when it's ready to go. Probably a ways away again. So I can understand why some of you guys are just gonna wait and see with how this game progresses, but what I'm seeing thus as far, I am very impressed. Speaking of Kickstarter, Summer and Mara is a game that's been fully funded and it will be released in September 2019, touted as The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker meets Stardew Valley. That has my interest for sure. hi res wants to see all of their games have crossplay. I think gamers want to see that as well. Somebody wants to make a PlayStation All-Star sequel in Dreams. That'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And Rainbow Six Siege Year 4 Season 1 has been detailed. Two new operators, a new map, and a full live stream will be coming on February 17th. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.